Hey YouTube, it's Cajun DIY Diva, and today we're gonna go. We're gonna make what I like to call turkey bone gumbo. Um, I don't really leave any bones in it, but um, it's made from your leftover turkey that you have from Thanksgiving or Christmas, and um, it's a great way to use up the leftovers and make something new out of them and uh, especially if you have company staying with you through the weekend and you want something really good and hearty for the you know watching football over the weekend or whatever so what I have here is I boiled I put all my bones the backbone the neck bones the carcass um, it doesn't matter if there's a little meat on it. I'm going to pick the meat off. And I just filled it up with water. And I also added in um, the unused giblets. My husband didn't cook the giblets when he, he did, um, he baked the turkey. And um, he baked one of the turkeys. So, um, anyway... Um, I filled it up, I boiled it for about half an hour, and then I put it in the refrigerator, and the reason why I didn't do anything with it right away is because I wanted it to get all the flavor, I even put the fat from like the skin that wasn't eaten, and you can see down here that beautiful color it makes but it's covered in this skin now of fat and you know I like to skim that off because I don't really want that in the gumbo some people might save it I don't really save that kind of fat but anyway so what I'm gonna do is skim off as much of this fat as possible I'm going to um, get all of that out. I'm going to take the all the meat out of this and uh, pick all the meat off the bones and then we'll be ready to really get started with cooking the gumbo. So I'll be right back. Alright so I just want to show you how I did this. I put a colander on top of a bowl because uh, as you're pulling the turkey bones out you, you know, a lot of the broth is super thick, you know, congealy kind of, and um, you don't want to lose it, lose any of that broth. It's like liquid gold. So I'm just taking, I think this is actually two turkeys. Um, so it's, well, it's some of the bones from two turkeys. So anyway, and I'm just... Uh, I use the tongs to pull all the big pieces out. But I'm just getting, um, you know, I could strain this, but I wouldn't want to do that. Um, and like I said, I call it turkey bone gumbo. So if there's a couple of bones that stay in there, that's okay. Not a bad thing. So I'm just trying to get out as much solid pieces as I can. And then I'm going to debone all of this. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to pour this into something else because I'm going to make my roux and the gumbo in this pot. So I'm going to take this out, wash this pot, and then I'm going to start assembling my gumbo. Okay, so here is. Okay, so um, I got almost a gallon. Uh, turkey broth from that and I got quite a bit of meat leftover meat I picked off all the meat off the bones and here's our other ingredients of course oil and flour for the roux we've got some uh, garlic powder onion powder those are like iffy I might not use those but I like to have them on hand bay leaf some Cajun seasoning some paprika, some salt. Um, I don't add extra pepper because there's enough in that. And I like for people to add their own. 
at the end. And I've got uh, celery, onions, bell pepper. Um, I had an orange bell pepper. You can use green bell peppers. That's more traditional. But this is what I had. So it works fine. Chopped garlic. And I had some fresh thyme. So I'm going to use that. I usually use dried. But I had some fresh. And then I have some green onions and some curly parsley. This is traditional. Um, and if I have time, I might make a little potato salad, which is what we usually serve with gumbo. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to I've got my pot all ready to go. I'm going to turn up the heat, preheat it, and I've got some oil already measured out. I'm doing like about a little over half a cup of oil and I'll do that. Plus probably a little more flour that I'll add in later. Um, that's my only my little secret trick and I like to use a wooden spoon because um, don't ever think that you can use like one of these silicone spatulas to make roux I just wouldn't trust it it's gonna melt can't use a plastic spoon you can use a metal spoon but I don't like to hear it clanging around on the pan because you have to constantly stir the other thing is do all this prep ahead of time do not think that you can leave the roux and come over here and chop an onion. No. Get everything ready before you start your roux because you want to babysit this roux and stay right there with it because it burns so easy. It's not hard to make a roux at all. It's really easy, but you can't be like a multitasking person and try to do a bunch of things when you want to make a roux. You know, if you don't think you can stand there for that long, you know, they sell roux in a jar, so, you know, just Google it. Uh, but I'm going to make my own roux. So the pot's hot. I'm adding in my oil. I like to heat up the oil a little bit first. And then I'm going to add in my flour. And you can also use a whisk to start out. That's like what the chefs do, but home cooks, Cajun cooks, like to use, or at least I do, I like to use my wooden spoon. And see, when you heat up the oil, it immediately starts cooking. And what happens is it stays light for quite a while. And then when it starts to get some color, um, you know, when it gets to about peanut butter color, then things start to move really fast. And you, um, it starts to darken really fast, and you, that's when you got to be careful. Because that's when it'll burn on you really fast if you don't babysit it. So, it seems like there's a lot more seems really thin right now but what I like to do is um, I don't know if, if you know this but the lighter your roux the thicker your gravy or soup or whatever you're making so when you have no color in it it's going to be thicker the darker it gets the thinner it's going to you know it, it's not as much of a thickening agent as it, as it is a flavoring agent so what I like to do is I let it get some color on it and then I add another little scoop of flour in there and it just let it blend in and um, I think it helps thicken it a little more. Of course some people like their gumbo really really thin. Some people like it. It's kind of a more Cajun way to have a thin gumbo. But, um, and in New Orleans, it's more, they like to do, 
like a thicker gumbo. And you can see some of the little bits are starting to darken in there right now. That's why you got to keep stirring. And I have this on high right now, so I can turn it down a little bit. Just so it doesn't get ahead of me. You got to keep that going. So I'm going to keep stirring this and I'll be back. Okay, now you can see it's got more color on it and uh, something that happens is that it gets, it thickens up and it's not as loose as it was before. Like it seemed like there was a whole lot of oil in there compared to the flour, now it's thicker. So now that it's getting some color on it, it's getting right about that time, I'm adding about another quarter of a cup of flour. And I'm just going to stir that in. And that's my little secret. Now everybody knows. This is what I do. I just came up with this on my own. I'm not copying this from any other chef. But they, I'll know if anybody copies it from me now. The only one who knows that is my son, because I taught him that too. But I'll know if anybody else comes out with another video and they add that flour in at the last minute, I'll know. So, now, it's just about dark enough. Some people like to get it even darker than this, but this is pretty good. I'm going to add, give it a nice color. It's just about there. So what I'm going to do to stop the cooking is I'm going to add in the veggies and let them cook in the roux a little bit. And they'll just kind of fry and that'll make them caramelize. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let me get my veggies. <sighs> All right, so I'm not, and just walking away from it that second, it tried to burn, but it's not. So, that's how quick it can burn, so be really careful turning the heat down. Okay, so I'm not gonna put the garlic in yet. I'm just gonna put in the onions, celery and bell pepper first because the garlic can burn so easily and that stuff is really hot in there. You need a good heavy pot to make a roux because a thin one it'll just burn. You need a nice heavy pot because the heat gets really intense in there. So, this seems like a lot of veggies. I, I, uh, and you can see in there, I actually put the, I chop up the celery leaves, not just, I have a video about, where I talk about celery leaves, but, um, I like to add the celery leaves, too, because they have a lot of flavor. So just let this cook. It kind of stops the roux from cooking. Okay, so I had a little battery problem, but you can see how uh, when I added the veggies, it really made the roux darken up a lot. So what I'm going to do now is add some, my, some of the broth. And like the great old Justin Wilson, the late great Justin Wilson used to say, it starts uncombining. So you just Stir that and it makes the roux start to dissolve. And so I just like to add in the broth slowly and let it really kind of all dissolve first before I add more. And you can see how thick and rich this broth is going to be. It's really thick right now because. It hasn't cooked very long. Now I'm going to turn up the heat again. I had let it go down a little bit. And 
I'm just going to let this simmer for a little while because I want these vegetables to really cook. And I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to make some potato salad. I'm just going to make a really small one. So I've got a little bit of celery, some green onion, a little tiny pickle, a boiled egg, and a peeled russet potato. So I'm going to dice this up. I'm going to boil it in water until it's soft. And then I'm going to add some mayonnaise, uh, a little Creole seasoning or Cajun seasoning, and um, I'm going to chop everything up, chop up the egg, the pickle, everything, and just mix it all up, and it's going to be delish. Okay, so my roux is all dissolved. I'm going to add in some more broth. And now I'm going to add in um, some bay leaf. I, I took the thyme off the stems. And I'm going to add in all of my garlic. And I'm going to let that simmer. Let that cook in there. Let all those flavors get together. I also like to try to scrape all of this part that's slid up on the side. Okay, I'm having so much trouble with my battery tonight, but uh, here's my gumbo still simmering, and here's my boiled potatoes from my potato salad, and um, you really want to get them kind of soft, where they really kind of almost mash, so that's ready. So I'm going to take these over here and drain them. And some people just mix it right up in the pot because a lot of people don't like cold potato salad. They like it room temperature or like right after it's cooked. So I've got in this bowl all my chopped vegetables and my chopped egg. Oops, some of it fell out. And I'm going to put, I think a lot of people put too much mayonnaise. So I'm just putting one spoonful of mayonnaise and I'm going to get my Cajun seasoning and just give it a little sprinkle. That's probably not much more than a quarter of a teaspoon and you know what, you just do it to taste the way you like it. Some people don't like any green stuff in it. Um, I mostly like pickles and celery in it, so I didn't put too much green onion. My husband likes green onion, but I don't love raw onion. So as I stir it, I kind of mash it a little bit, and that's kind of makes it more of a Cajun potato salad also. So this is just to taste. You could add salt if you want to. But that's about it. That looks beautiful and yummy to me. So back to the gumbo. I need my... I'm ready to season, so I'm going to do... Let's see if I can show you how I do this. I pretty much just sprinkle in, but you want to put about a teaspoon of your Cajun seasoning in there. And... I poured out, this is some onion powder. Um, I really like granulated garlic as opposed to garlic powder. It kind of doesn't clump as much. But even though I have garlic in there, I still like to add some because I really like that garlic flavor. And then I also add some paprika. And paprika, you can add a good bit. Um, I'm going to take the little, snap the little lid off and carefully put in, that's probably a teaspoon of paprika and stir that in. Let that simmer and um, over in my air fryer I am, um, I am browning some smoked sausage 
to put in there. So I'm going to let this simmer a little longer. Um, and then I'm going to start adding my turkey. If you don't have enough turkey to like fill up the pot left over, you can also add chicken to it. That's fine. Um, you can also add andouille sausage to this. That's a heavily smoked uh, sausage that they make in Louisiana. Um, all of the get all that seasoning out of there. And um, I'm also going to put, I chopped up some parsley and green onions to throw on at the end, but I'm going to throw a handful of parsley in now because I just like the curly parsley flavor. And just let that simmer in there. And we're going to let that simmer for a little bit as soon as the... Uh, sausage is ready then I'm gonna throw in all the meats all right so my sausage is nice and crispy so I'll take it out of there and go and dump that right in to my gumbo make all these guys come out when I'm not holding the camera and then I've also got all of my turkey. And I'm going to dump this in there. That's probably like about a pound and a half or so of meat. Um, the turkey meat. And then that was one pound of the smoked sausage. So I'm going to bring this back up to heat a little bit it was on simmer and I may add a little more turkey broth and bring that back up to a boil and I'm gonna let that simmer just a little bit longer I'm sorry I've had issues with my camera the battery going dead but you know I'm Cajun and we just we just got to make it work. We just got to keep at it until we get it done. So that's what I'm doing tonight. All right, so my gumbo's ready. So I have one more thing I want to do, and that is I like to take my parsley and green onions, fresh parsley, fresh green onions, and add it right on top right at the last minute, right before you're going to serve. And that just makes it really good, it gives it a fresh taste. So now just kind of stir that in, it kind of floats on top. But it's got this beautiful deep down brown color. And I actually have a little bit of broth left, so you don't want to waste that. I'm going to put it in the freezer for the next time I make gumbo. And, you know, or anything else I want to make that's something that you would use for chicken broth or something. So I already put some rice in my bowl. It's very Cajun to use white rice. And I'm going to ladle some up and try to get some sausage and... and turkey in there. And now I'm going to come back over here and um, a lot of Cajuns like to garnish with, uh, not really garnish, but um, I can't find my filet. Um, it's a powder um, gumbo filet you can google it um, you use you put like a very like an eighth of a teaspoon you can sprinkle on top some some um, New Orleans gumbo makers they cook that into it I don't like it that way I like it as just sprinkled on top um, another thing is pepper vinegar um, just give that a couple little shakes at the end um, to garnish my husband 
he's not a big pepper vinegar fan. He likes Tabasco on top of his gumbo. And then I'm going to take this yummy potato salad and I'm just going to put a little scoop right there on the side and I'm going to put some French bread. Um, I grew up, my mom always had saltine crackers to serve with the gumbo. Another thing that some Cajuns do is they put like some slices of boiled egg on their gumbo. And so that is it. That is the my Cajun turkey bone gumbo for the day after Thanksgiving. So um, I hope you like this video. Please subscribe. Please like this video and uh, tell me what you think of the video.